you know, aiming to. One, two, three, four. Okay, great. How many flying B, whether it's low end B or high end B? Okay, a lot more. Great. C? Okay, slightly less. Okay, two liners. There can be two liners Cs. Yeah, 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 good. And, uh, okay, and CCC competitions, stuff like that. Enzos and all that. Good. So I don't have to talk about stalling and dealing with Enzos. Uh, okay. But it's the concept, you know, what we're going to learn today is you're going to learn a little bit more. A lot of you will already know about two liners and the differences in them and the shark nose te technology. You know, there's so much that you've got to learn because two liners, for example, are a totally different aircraft to a, a standard paraglider. And, and pilots have to understand that. It's fine to fly them. They're brilliant. They're absolutely stunning. Um, but you just have to, have to understand a different way of learning, different way of flying. Very subtle. Um, <laughs> But it's understanding that, which is really, really important. But we don't need to worry too much. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Okay. Now, how many people are thinking of going into two liners? You know, you might have a choice soon, but yeah. <laughs> Excellent. It's nice to know I've noted it for myself. <laughs> There's no, you know, I, you know, everyone sort of has a, you know, these things on the horizon, it's always been something. Uh, and two liners is one of those things that everyone talks about, but people don't quite understand it. Um, so we're just going to sort of shed some light on that and how sharp nose and two liners are different. Boom! Thanks very much, Simon. That's great. There's a glider. Well done, mate. But what, um, the thing is, okay, I'm just going to just go back. The reason we did this is because a really good friend of mine passed away uh, in April. April is a time when the holes in the cheese line up. And as James and all coaches, you know, we all know that oh, it's spring thermals, pilots are rusty, possibly flying a new kit they bought dying to try out, things like that. So all the holes in the tube start to line up, don't they? So spring is always a time where we're always a little bit cautious of pilots doing too many new things on new sites and things like that. So it's about minimising risk. But Malcolm was a stunning guy. And um, he, he was a coach, a really experienced pilot. He flew a glider that was a B, and he, he could have flown anything. Um, and he knew the area so well. So why did he have an accident? What happened? And although uh, we don't know fully the, the full details, what Malcolm would have loved is for me to analyse it and share it with people, because he was a teacher as well, and a coach, and an instructor, and a tandem pilot, and he would have hated his death to go to waste. Which is why I, start, I put this together, thinking, what is it that people... Maybe not getting, or you know, people miss their SIV or misunderstand things. So I thought I'm going to make it real simple and start again. And just you know, some bits you're going to think, oh, yeah, easy, obvious. Other bits you might think, oh, wow, that's a bit new. I haven't thought about that. That's what this talk is about, okay? That's what it's for. Um, so what we've really got to understand is our clients, unlike these beautiful sailplanes out there, that the person is right up there inside the wing and moving with the wing. Hang gliders, you know, all aircraft are with the wing. The wing and you are moving together. Paragliders, way different, okay? We're slung six, seven, eight meters down below the wing we're flying. And that's what you've really got to understand. And you've got to understand, you know, the roll, the pitch, the pendulum, the yaw, the harness yaw, because that adds to it, adds to complications. All these factors are playing on you as pilots, as paraglider pilots. This pendulum is critical to understand because a lot of pilots always think, oh no, I always fly, you know, a bit like that, really. <laughs> it doesn't ever go beyond that. Uh, which is probably true in most cases. But suddenly you're going to have an incident where, poof, it's gone like that. And so you've now got pendulum that you can use to your advantage or not. <coughs> at your peril. But it's understanding the 
pendulum, understanding what this does, how much time you've got with this pendulum, because there's advantages and disadvantages for you being right under there, miles away from the wing. Okay? And this is what people don't quite understand. They don't quite understand that. And I'll give you a few examples that highlight this um, to help you sort of understand that concept really. So we're going to go right back to basics now. We're going to do the old pitch, your and roll thing so that everyone's got it. You remember being at school, yeah, yeah, pitch, your, roll. So, but we haven't got the wing doing all this together. We've got it doing it whilst we're slung underneath it quite a long way. And you've got to understand there's a big pause between the glider moving and you moving. Um, and that's what I think people are sort of a little bit, sort of, you know, maybe forgot, I don't know. So we operate in, it's a bit wider than that actually. But when you're flying along, you know, you take off from Bradway, you're having a soaring day, you know, whoa, 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 easy, easy. You know, when the glider gets to 45 degrees, you're thinking, whoa, break it. And if it drops right back to 45 degrees, you're like, whoa, hands up, come back, come back. And you want to see it above your head, right? That's normal flying, isn't it? Which is, you know, for all of us, it's normal flying. Um, we can go into the amber zone, no problem whatsoever. The glider is totally trimmed to go into here and to go back to there. It's absolutely fine. It's fine. You can go back, put your hands up if it dives forwards. You could break it in there. Do you need to? If it's going to just stop here, do you need to break it? That's not an answer. <laughs> I know it's going to stop there. You, if it, I said it's stopping there. Um. <laughs> well, you're a question. <laughs> so no one's going to deny you that. <laughs> so the first exercise we do in SIV is pitch. Okay, just to under, just to give people a little bit of confidence in whoa, 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 whoa. You know, I'd have broken that, and he's telling me not to do anything. And it's just to understand that the glider can go to the amber zone and be operational and you're still okay. It's not going to do anything nasty. But you have to start thinking, ah, 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 this is, I'm now have to start piloting this wing. I can't leave it to go into that zone. This zone, now you start to really hackles up, breaks. This zone is the bit you start to have to break, isn't it? And if it goes behind you, what do you do? Whew, who said stall? <laughs> you could stall it. If, it. if you knew how to stall it and you think, right, it's way behind me, I'd rather go underneath it, slung underneath it with my pendulum and go into a beautiful backfly, because I know how to do that, than let it go and have a shoot. So if you can stall it, yes, that is an option. But for a lot of pilots, my, that's not an option. I'm going to just let it go. <laughs> and it's going gonna, it's gonna to dive, isn't it? It's, oh no, it's diving. What do I do when it dives? Break. Break the dive. I should have a t-shirt that says that. Because <laughs> most of SIV instruction is, release, release, really, break, 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 break. <laughs> because uh, it goes into a power band because of this pendulum. And... It's wonderful. It's, it slings forwards. And as it accelerates to here, it gets faster. But your gliders, as I'll demonstrate in the videos, when it gets here from normal flights, if a pilot just goes into the amber zone and realises, oh, this is nice, and maybe they've started to stall, maybe, they'll release the brakes. That's what you're trained to do, isn't it? So you release the brakes, yeah. You comes over your head, yeah, in through the green zone. Now it's diving, so now I break the dive. And you match your braking with the speed. So if the dive is fast, your braking is fast. If it's aggressive, your braking is aggressive. And you match your braking with the speed of the dive. So that's, that's what you generally do. But if you were to do that, if you were to release a glide, oh, it's starting to stall, release, dive gently. It's actually tested that it's going to get to zero and it will deflate for you. Without a brain, your glider will get to zero, deflate, to allow you then not to be sucked into, this is the power zone here when it, when, with the pendulum. So not to be sucked in and hit the sail, but it will deflate. You'll then fall past it. It will then reopen and you'll fly away. 
as long as your hands are up. Okay, but you're not going to do any of that, are you? Because if you broke the dive, it wouldn't deflate. You wouldn't have to test this bit. Do you see what I mean? Leave the test pilots and that bit. You just break it. So you can break, 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 break. And if it stops there in full stall, and then you start swinging underneath, what do you do with your hands? Off. Because you've done its job. You've stopped the threat of it collapsing, or you being sucked into it. And now you're swinging underneath, using that pendulum that we uniquely have, and you fly away. So break the dive. If it's a fast dive, you break it. But you have to know that there's regions where the dive, ah, oh, it's not going to deflate, it's okay, it won't necessarily deflate. So I can use that section of the dive, because that's speed. So this is now, you know, this is our accelerator. So paragliders, we haven't got throttles, but we have a dive. And that dive movement there in this zone is speed. And speed is maneuverability, maneuverability is control and it's safety. So you use that speed to turn you, you use the speed to recover or turn away from a deflation or anything like that. You use that dive to get away. And that's what this bit of the, the dive is, the pitch is. So you, it's just understanding that. Everyone understand so far? Am I talking too fast? I get excited, so I talk <laughs> fast. So slow me down if I'm talking too fast. So here's this little bit of thing. What? Release? Are you kidding me? <laughs> you might have to release it. In a certain scenario, this is when we're talking about this beautiful scenario where you're rotating in a spin, auto-rotation, that's an auto-rotation or sat. If ever you see a glider, you don't know what's going on. You're trying to solve it, this problem, and it's right in front of you there. If it's in front, lower than the horizon, but actively going around, you put your hands up. And all that's going to happen is it's going to fly away. Because it's already at the fullest extent of its dive in this scenario. So therefore, putting your hands up and rolling out, it recovers. But I'll explain that a little bit further down the line. People are thinking, what? What do I do? Do I release? Do I hold it? That's, that's going back to your stall, whoever said stall. If it goes back to there, yeah, I would definitely <coughs> consider a stall as a safer option. So when we're teaching search to stall in SIV, or any instructors, you know, I talk, when I talk about SIV, I represent all instructors, not just our courses. But it's the hardest job to do. It's the SIV instructor's nightmare is searching for stall because you're relying on the pilot to do it. Quite often that doesn't work out very well. So here's the pilot. I don't know if we've got sound, I'll just check. He's searching for stall. So he flies the brake, waits a little bit so his body goes underneath. That's very important because of the pendulum. Now it drops back. Now they release. They break it a little bit, remaining in the amber zone. Perfect. Happy with that? So the pilot will feel if we say it's a cluster, it could be any one of any. But you will, you will go down and be heavy, 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 light. That's it starting to soar. You don't wait to see it drop back, but that might also happen. Um, but that's the stall point. And the stall point occurs, um, you know, at a given speed, an angle of attack. I'm not going to explain all that, but we all know about stall points, what it feels like. But the, the important thing is that you understand the feeling of, whoa, that's not right. I had pressure, 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 now there's nothing. Off everything. Because I'm in the amber zone, I know I can get off, I can let it come over my head, go into the dive movement, which is safe. I can either break that threat, or I can use that dive to turn away or whatever. But you have to get it to dive. You have to get back to balanced flight. You can't leave balanced flight and go into the scoop. Everyone all right with that? On page? So this is him. What we do in our SIV courses is we, we, we always teach on the radio, yeah, yeah, do it, yeah, left, right, yeah, release, yeah, good. But then when we think they've got it, we say, okay, do it in your own time. Because in your own time is when you really learn, in silence. You go in, yep, yeah, that's it, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, got it. I, you know, if it happens to be in the air, I know what to do. I'm not relying on this guy I'm paying, and I could do that myself. And that's what SIV is for, is getting you ready for scenarios that will occur in your flight, okay? 
So it's a bit like parenting. We've got to not take control so that you can mess it up. But we're ready on the radio. So if you heard the radio, you would hear me saying, release, release, release. Break, 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 break. Hands up, hands up, hands up. <laughs> and that's what I'd be saying. Okay? And you can see it's obvious, isn't it? Looking at that person flying that glider, you'd know exactly what to do, wouldn't you? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so this is a photograph that I haven't turned round. <laughs> you need to turn that round. It's impossible. <laughs> That's pretty normal. So this is a pilot with a full glider, beautiful aerofoil section, beautiful. Okay, that is ready to fly. It will it will dive to get its trim back, trim flight back. You've now got this light, nice long lines, all tight, <laughs> with a big weight on the bottom of it, called a pilot. And that glider is going to dive, that pilot is going to swing, and that is going to the pendulum is going to really get that glider to dive. Isn't it? So it dives. Obvious, you all say. What would you do if it dives really violently? Break it. Okay. There's not even half a second for you to think, what do I do? You have lost the time. You have to break now. And speed, reaction speed, is vital in paradigm, vital in aggressive dives. Okay. So, but what most people do is they do this. <laughs> they think, ah, oh, I'm pushing against something that's quite secure. I feel uncomfortable yeah. from, <laughs> with that. And uh, I really don't want to do that because it feels like I'm going to headbutt the leading edge. <laughs> so I don't want to do that. I'd rather, I'd rather do that. <laughs> it's just that I can, if I hit it, I can push it away from me. <laughs> that's defensive, you see. But if they do that, they feel like a psychopath. Why am I doing that? I feel like I'm going to just headbutt it. So they don't believe us when we say, break, break. And they no, 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 no. I'm going to hold on to that thing that feels secure. Same, same event, different life, different life. Same body position. Wow! That's what will happen to you if you don't train. You know, it takes a lot of training, a lot of exposure to that. So don't do that. Don't get into that position. If it dives, you break it, and you break it really hard. And if it's diving like that, you can break as much as you like. You can have the whole body right in front of you, sort like that. And as soon as you swing underneath, pendulum, you let off. You fly away. Bliss. As long as you break the dive. I mind it all flying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I say to people, I say, please don't leave this talk until the very end. Because <laughs> if you leave the talk halfway through, you will never come back. <laughs> it's about shit sandwich. I've got to, you know, give it to you nice, get really bad, and then we'll go nice at the end. <laughs> Just so you get that lovely, cuddly feeling. It's because I don't want you to give up. I want you to stay flying and enjoy it. But I really want you to understand what it's all about, how, how fantastic these wings are under the right control. You can, and you cannot rely on passive safety. It doesn't exist. Okay? You're the pilot. If that dives, you, sh you break it. Don't say, well, I'm annoying when it's passive safety. <laughs> <laughs> you have to stop it. Okay? What happens if you hit the sail? What do you do? You get wrapped up, yes? So it depends which part of the sandwich, isn't it? So now we're really on this sort of shit part of the sandwich. I'm going to scare you a little bit more. What we tell people, if they don't break the dive, rule number one, and they, they let it go right back there, right back there. So, oh no, it's right down there. I don't know how to stall, so I'm going to just do this. Whoop! I, mean, oh, I don't know. I'll just hold on to these risers. <laughs> If it then goes really <coughs> past the horizon, it, then it accelerates. There's a 20 degree acceleration point where that's the power band of the pendulum. That's the bit that sucks the pilot in. Okay, that's the bit where the pilot will hit it. Now, if you hit the leading edge, 
I'm only telling you this because I think you can cope with the stress. <laughs> if you hit the leading edge, so you go past it like, and it comes in, you see it going out there, it's nice colour. And when you hit it, you push it away from you, okay? Push it away. And you'll push it away, and you'll probably catch a watch or something, but it'll rip a leading edge, but you'll fall straight down the middle of it, poof, it all opens, and you hear, then you hear the instructor again saying, hats up, hats up, hats up. <laughs> And then you're like, oh wow, that, that wasn't smart. <laughs> but if, if it dives and you really get sucked in, it's gone right into the 20, 20 degree power band, you're in now, you hit the middle of the wing. We always tell the pilot to swim. And all they're doing is they're swimming right in the center of the wing, and they, they, you get to the trailing edge pretty quick because the cord is not very long. So one, two, and you're at the trading edge, aren't you? You push that down like you're pushing off a dress. Not many of you <laughs> dress is as fast as that. Yes, but you push. <laughs> yes. Large difference. Everyone gets to see you dress. So you push it down until you can see your handle, and you throw that handle into the blue, whilst your dress is flailing behind you like that. Priscilla, queen of the desert. Okay. <laughs> Out goes the reserve, poof, opens the reserve, bang, everything's great, okay? But you're not going to hit the sail, are you? No. Because no. you're going to hit the sail. It doesn't matter even if, even if you're a bit nervous and you, whoa, break the dive, but let off really quick. Nothing happens to the glider, because it was quick. You didn't hold it on, you just broke it, let go, and let it dive. Oh, that's an okay dive, or I could break a little bit dive. You know, you're in control of that dive. So you get bad dives where the glider is rotating around you and you get good dives where you and the glider are travelling together. That's a good dive. That's what we call recovery phase dive. It's all coming out because of this beautiful pendulum. Yeah. So pendulum is bad in some cases, good in others. So here's a really good example of the glider going to zero and deflating to protect the pilot. It doesn't break. It deflates for him. Pilot keeps his hands up, glider does nothing. That's classic. If you could hear the, the um, speakers, you know, I'm saying, break, 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 break. <laughs> you know, I've got time to say it three times. <laughs> break, break, break. <laughs> I'm like, what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Just hold on to these risers. <laughs> Just break it. This is the worst case scenario for you when the whole glider is open and you're just about to swing just like this the scenario i showed you the really bad one because this means there's no two stage of opening there's no two stage of it delaying it's going to do that <clears throat> and it's like a hot knife through butter oh my god what are you going to see next <laughs> pilot passing it because he's holding the rose on us <laughs> And then the next shot, he's even texting his mates. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's taking a picture. I'm going to get the selfie. He's 360. I'm waiting So, but this glider, look, that is not a great <laughs> image, is it? I don't want to be that guy. That's the second after. Because... The glider went to zero, it started to deflate, he fortunately passed past it, kept his hands exactly where he left them, <laughs> and the glider flew like that. He yawed, look at the yaw, that's a recovery yaw. So he's, he's already in there, just in that drop, because his feet were all stuck out, he rotated as he was dropping. Okay, not good. So he gets off his phone, and he thought, oh, I got away with that. I'll uh, look cool again and fly away. So this is the real time of that footage. So we, we, these are fantastic photographs taken by a brilliant photographer in Australia. And uh, this is me teaching the guy. Oh, yeah. So he does the same old drop back. Rice, rice, rice. Break, 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 break. Boosh. Hands up, hands up. Forget it, forget it. You dumb shit. Okay. So all the pilot had to do, first of all, as soon as it starts to still release, obviously, let it come over their head and break it. Actively break it. 
Not go to victim school and... <laughs> you can't do that. You cannot do that if you're to fly paradigms. If it dives, you break it. And you don't waste half a second thinking about it. You break it. There's a nice picture to finish. Is that the good bit? That's the right. <laughs> That's the nice bit. It's your exciting, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Happy with pitch, everybody? <laughs> what are we going to do if it's a really bad dive? <laughs> and if it's a nice dive, then you can use it. So we often say, I use the dive to turn left. You know, in the thermal, in the thermal, you know, we're talking about getting people ready for thermally. And if you're in a thermal, you know, would you start turning now? No, because you'll spin it, won't you? You'll rotate and do it some time and you come out of the thermal, falling down into the sink and all hell breaks loose. You're going to let the pendulum bring you down so that it penetrates, punctures the lift. This is all whilst you're going up. And you're using that lovely pendulum to puncture into the lift to then give you speed, because that's a good dive. And that speed gives you maneuverability, which allows you to bank into good cadence, 360, which you settle down, get the cadence absolutely perfect, and now you call that thermal perfectly, whoop, and up you go. <coughs> That's using the dive positively. Do you get me? And we use the dive all the time. Don't be afraid of the dive, but recognise a really nasty dive where the pilot's swinging to aggravate, to throw oil on the fire of the energy. But if it's just shooting, you think, okay, that's not bad. I can monitor that dive, or I'll actually use that dive to puncture the lift, to balance in the turn nicely, and then I get the cadence perfect. Because thermaling is all about getting the cadence perfectly right. So you know right now, I know, me and this glider thing, that I'm going around. I want me to be going like this round, not going like this as I go around. Because that gives bad readings on the vario. But if you get the cadence beautiful, you know that you and the glider are travelling perfectly, so therefore the thermal must be stronger over there because your circle is perfect. And so you move your position, get into the core a bit more, penetrate more, turn, get the cadence really sweet. When you're in the centre of the thermal, you now know, right, me and the glider are perfect, the thermal's perfect, I'm going up. Now you hit an edge, now you know to fly away from that edge, fly straight a bit more, turn tighter, and so on. So that's about cadence, understanding that lovely roll and pitch using the pendulum of the glider. It's not, you know, it doesn't stay above your head like that. It has to move in order to give you that grace and elegance to make the most out of it, to thermal. Not be afraid of turning tight in small courts. So that brings us on to roll. Is everyone right? It's quite hot in here. Is that my menopause? Yeah. <laughs> okay, keep going. I keep going. One more session. I'll have the rest. So the other thing about sort of roll is when we have deflations, because deflations create this roll straight away. And that's the other thing that is a, a good and a bad thing about paradigms, because paradigms, suddenly our wing has just gone bad, but we don't know anything about it yet. Well, the, you know, this weight slung under here. Well, that's nothing to happen to that for a second until, well, it's suddenly turned. So, it's all about understanding a really interesting aspect of flying, especially now, especially with the beauty of more shark nose, more lines back, more aspects, and more two line stuff. But anyway, but all gliders... If you have a deflation, the only time you're accelerated into the turn is the initial change of direction, change, because the deflation suddenly come in and suddenly the glider turns, that's your change of course. But if you're quick and you stop that, and you stop that roll and pendulum in, and you let your body swing under the wing because you stopped it quickly, your body comes under the wing, now you've stopped the threat, you stop that aggression of the dive, this aggression of a potential roll. You stop once your body has stopped the roll into the deflation, allowed you to swing underneath. You've now bought yourself some time because 
the physics of it is the glider doesn't have a brain. You do. And you're looking at that thinking, ah! But the glider thinking, well, I've got all this um, action reaction I'm flying. And I've already swung under that bit because that's where I'm getting my lift. This bit, relevant. Doesn't matter because I'm already under the flying wing. Because I've caught it. I've stopped that roll. I've got my body underneath it. And now I'm flying. And the reason we, we do lots of manoeuvres to illustrate this. So if you're really quick to react, boom. And you swing underneath, boom. You, you can back off the reaction. And what we say to pilots is, right, deflate the wing 50% and fly it straight. Keep it in, hold it in, but keep it flying straight. So you see the pilot holding it in and he's keeping flying it straight. And people think, oh, it's going to pull me, it's going to pull. It doesn't pull you once you've swung underneath. That's where people overreact and they spin it the other way and stuff like that. It's about, right, hang on, I've stopped the threat of the roll. Now I'm in control of this. I'm buying myself time. Do I need to turn away from the cliff or other people? Yes, in that case I can. You can turn away from a deflation. Um, or you can let the deflation turn you a little bit, but monitor it. Yep, I've got that. Now I'm flying into the valley. Now I'll pump it out or whatever I need to do to get it. It's about buying time. But reacting quickly to the initial explosion of a deflation and turn. That you must react quickly to. But once you're underneath it with a deflation like this, it'll go straight. You can do a full spiral going the other way. You can turn away. We have to test. If a glider deflates like that and the deflation stays in, the test pilot will turn 180 degrees the other way in a normal input, and it should not spin or leave balanced flight. By normal, you know, that's, we're simulating a pilot overreacting a bit, and the, the glider should still fly. It will still fly, because it... It's just decreased in size. That's all it thinks. So you have increased your loading of things, store point, etc. But it, that's all it is. And when, with shark nose, and especially with pod harnesses, because we say the brief is, do whatever it takes to stay straight. <coughs> and do you know what the, a person in a pod has to do in order to stay straight? Is lean into the deflation in order to stay straight because of the dynamics of change. But it's about piloting what you've got, not what you think you should have. You see what I mean? I've got what's happening. You know, oh, if I, if I just keep it straight, I have to actually lean in. And it's just changing your mindset of, oh, no, I've been taught big deflation, opposite break. You know, yes at the beginning, but not once you're underneath because of the pendulum. Can you explain that leaning in place, Well, I don't really understand physics you actually okay. myself. <laughs> <laughs> What happens is with shark nose, because you're swung underneath the flying wing, your, your pod, the lift is created on this side, and so you actually have to start pulling away from the lift in order to keep flying straight, because of the drag of this side. So in a pod, you do, in the normal harness you hardly notice it. With high aspect ratio you notice it a lot more, with shark nose and two liners a lot more. Um, so anything above a C, you'll notice that the pilots have to lean slightly into, or you're their harness slightly into the deflation, in order to keep the glider flying straight. Because you've already swung under the flying part of the wing, and this bit's irrelevant. We can talk about science later. I'm on a roll. <laughs> so here's an example. So you can see it's a good glider, high aspect. So the pilot... Is, falls into the deflation first, but now once they, they've got it under control, you can see they're, they're having to yaw slightly more in order to keep it straight. And it's about flying what you've got, not what you think you should have. Because a lot of pilots lean away from the deflation, and that actually doesn't do much at all. You know. And it's about understanding, okay, I, I don't have to be in a panic, I can back off the pressure. Um, and not panic. And this is the other thing. A lot of people, because they're so um, adrenaline's coursing through their veins as they're dealing with this massive collapse, but they've got it in check now, so they're okay. Now, Jockey, that, that comment you just made there about leaning into the flying wing, away from the collapse, that's in just about every textbook I've ever read. 
for uh, there you go, Julian. He said all the textbooks. <laughs> <laughs> so the first right, thing he says no is lean away and then apply a sufficient break to stop any turn or your. Correct. To the initial roll. Right. But once you're underneath, that so changes. You can go back to it changes, yeah. And this is what people don't understand. Because as you say, it's on all the books. You lean away and you stabilise the wing. But actually, with modern gliders, that subtle difference doesn't happen once you're underneath the wing. Once you're and it's still the deflated. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. That's the only change. But I would, always, I would definitely say to everybody, still lean away from a deflation. Still lean away initially. from a deflation, especially initially. Yeah, okay. Don't let me... You know, that, was, that bit of the leaning in, yawing in was nice to know, not need to know. I was just giving you a bit too much. So what's really important is this, once I've controlled that deflation, I've controlled my environment. So now I look at my altitude, my heading. So now you think, right, what do I need to do? Do I need to get back to the beach? Do I need to fly out into a valley? You know, what? And then I'll pump it out. We talk about <laughs> pumping it out. And the pumps have to be hard and firm. But we'll come back to that. But what we're using, this is, again, this is the concept. of Because you know that a 50% deflation is not a threat. You can fly it straight. Yeah, you might have to lean into it. Weird, but okay. Uh, you can turn away from it. It's not a threat. Now, if you have a cravat, that's a threat. Because that's a, a, a tip that's come in. It's presenting surface area to the wind, the airflow. And because it's in the tip, it's really pulling you. And because you're going forwards and fast, it's going to pull you more and more and more the faster you go. So it's not going to come out. It's, going to, it's nasty. <coughs> so you need to stop that. So a good way... This is a bit more, this is a back of that. Obviously, you pump it first, big pumps. Um, but you can, once you, if you can put on the opposite brake, roll underneath the wing, get that cravat slowed down, you can then do a 50% deflation or a big, big ear. So, and that turns this horrible cravat with a lot of drag at the tip into a friendly 50% deflation with no drag at the tip. Your pendulum falls underneath the flying part of the wing. There's no drag now into the cravatted side. Because it's not a cravat anymore. It's a collapse. You're changing it. Do you see what I mean? So you can change a high drag effect, poof, into just a flapping flag. You swing under the wing. Now that buys you time to pump it out um, and to do whatever is needed to clear the cravat. Do you see? But you don't want a cravat to accelerate and turn you hard into the turn. You need to stop that because the cravat <coughs> spiral is bad. Because you can black out because of the G-force uh, and it's not going to come out. You can't go to victim school there. You have to stop it. <coughs> so deflations are all about the energy of the pendulum. The energy of the deflation. All it's doing is your aircraft is travelling along at 38 k's an hour, poof, it's changed direction because of that deflation. <coughs> so that pilot has got to be so quick to stop that deflation turning like that. You could use the dive, yes, if it dives into 90 degree dropping, you can use that dive to gently take control and pressure on the outside and turn that into a nice recovering 360 and exit. You could do that, of course you can, but you've got to stop it gaining momentum building energy, and you've got to get control by having pressure on the outside brake. And that has to occur fast. Fast. Not, not, oh, what's that? Oh, what do I do? You know, oh, break it down. You know, it's got to be bold, and you can be quick to react. So, this is a deflation with a speed bar. So this is more dynamic, okay? So, boof. Big change, drop in 90 degrees, pilot catches it, rolls gently back onto their course and pumps the deflation out. That's what you should be doing. Okay? And people think, oh yeah, but that's because he was on a course, he knew he was going to deflate that. That's why he was so quick. That's how quick you've got to be if you are using speed bar. So that was a little bit later. You see the pilot yawing a little bit more, <laughs> but he still caught it. And it's about catching it. And 
You don't go on a speed bar without being ready to react. You don't go and peel a banana and cruise around. You are at speed, ready to pull. What the hell is that? Back on your speed bar, off you go again. You know, that's the sort of reaction you should have. No other. <coughs> so fast to react, but fast to back off the minute your action has done what it's needed to do. And this is another one that pilots make the mistake. They go, whoa! And they stop it, and the, the pendulum goes underneath. They go, ah, that's great. I stopped it, but they don't let go of it. And Wah! it starts to stall. Ah! It's stalling. And then the, the cr collapse that they initially caused the problem comes out because they're stalling. And then they let go. And, ah! and then it dives. <laughs> and what do they do? They don't break that dive, which they should do. Uh, and it has a collapse and it's called a cascade. All because the pilot was a little bit slow to, to back off. And so it's about that reaction time. And <coughs> this is the thing with... Flying. I think perhaps this is probably the biggest takeaway you should have of this lecture is well, it'd be fast to react, but quick to back off. And with paraglides, we've got sloppy controls. So you can actually pump quite a lot. As long as you let off, you can get away with murder. <laughs> but don't keep holding it on. Um, so what we're illustrating here is... The power of the deflation, it takes you off course, <coughs> yes. But if you're quick to react, you don't go past 90 degrees. Now, 90 degrees is what we call the dropping. 90 degrees is when deflate, turn. And now it's turning, it's diving. Diving is good. Diving is speed. Speed is manoeuvrability. So if I apply opposite brake <coughs> now, I will not only roll away from the deflation, which is what I want to do anyway, but that action of rolling away from the deflation sends air through the cross-port venting and to the tip. So it opens the deflation as you're getting back on track. So why wouldn't you use that drop-in to come round? So that's a, some people who sort of misread um, SIV instructors. Oh yeah, you know, let it dive, let it roll. But what they're trying to say is let that drop-in, let that pendulum occur to build the speed up to get back. But if you have already swung underneath, because you're quick, or because the glider's taking it underneath, then you've bought yourself a little bit more time. It's not as energetic as it is when you're penduluming in roll. So this is another example, taking a bit more time to recover, but using that, that roll. So here's the speed bar on, buff, there's the drop in, gently pulls on the brake. Gently, he's got control, it's totally inflated, so he's not in a big hurry, gets back on course. It's about using the right amount of energy, but fast. So you pull it on, well, it's a bit too much, back off a bit. But it's got to be quick. And this is important. And it's quite interesting. You know, our demographic, we're all getting a little bit older as we fly. And it's not that our reaction time is... Slower, I think we've got the similar reaction times as a young 16 year old. But the mistake we make is we don't change anything. Oh, it should be working by now! <laughs> <You know. laughs> if it's not working, change it. So if you're pumping a glider and the deflation isn't coming out, pump harder. Change what you're doing. Okay? Because you can pull a lot of brake, a lot of brake. Okay, firm and deep. Look at that. That is a lot of break, isn't it? He's got his hands, you know, well, it's sort of, it should be down to his leg with that glider. That sort of glider has a less break range than other gliders. And the fast, the, the real Enzos, they have more break range because they are trimmed to go at speed. So they don't want tight brakes because they need to be a bit sloppy so they perform more <coughs> at speed. But anyway, that's. <clears throat> nice to know, not need to know. But that's how much brake you can put momentarily. And the amount of time you say, you know, pump the brake, pump the brake. And everyone goes, ee, ee, ee. <laughs> pump it. Pump it. Until it has an effect. And so you see that wingtip sweeping back, that glider tip moving, that deflation clearing. 
the, these exploratory little eat, 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 they're only pulling this little bit here. Got nothing to do with this bit over here. It's got to go so deep that that comes back. So, firm and deep, okay? But get a connection with the wing. Oh. A connection with the wing, how do, how do I explain this? It's not, um, it's not, you know, we call it active flying, you could have. But it's not nervous flying, it's having a connection with the wing, like being a spider on a web, feeling all the vibrations. When you're flying a glider, you should, if you, you should have your hands on the brakes, feeling it, if you're on a glide or anything, maybe on the back risers, but you feel it. So the minute there's a surge, you're reacting. It's not nervous, you're just reacting all, all the time. And that's prevention, that stops the deflations coming. Because that stops the energy build-up, that stops the change of direction, that stops the deflation. So it's about being quick to react and having that connection with the wing. And if you have a problem where it changes and you pull on the brake, if you've got no connection with the wing, if it's light, it's not doing anything until you get a connection with the wing, until your hand comes down and you've got resistance. Now it's doing something. That's the connection we talk about. And so punch the brake. And what we do when, with all gliders now, all gliders, <coughs> we, we, but it started off with two liners like Xenos and things like that, where, oh God, I mean, Richard will testify, you do not want those two little babies over there to say hello to each other mid-flight, okay? <coughs> not that way or that way. You do not want the tips to touch, because <coughs> you know it will cravat and it'll probably twist your harness, and it will be a reserve deployment. So you do everything to stop it. So what we started to teach pilots, we don't do full source at all, we do two stage, <coughs> but what you're teaching a pilot to do is isolate this one. Say you've got a little cravat here, yeah, you didn't collapse it past it, you pump it, you know, you do the usual tip, line, pull, no. Um, you can punch this down. And you can stall, because it's a high aspect, because of this lovely pendulum under the flying wing, you're perfectly safe to stall that side whilst flying that side. So we teach people, stall it, stall it. We want to see that wing tip go back so that it literally is at right angles. And unless it's at right angles, we're not going to stop badgering you. <laughs> okay? Oh, God. And so what you're actually doing is, poof! So this half of the wing has stalled to clear the cravat, or whatever it is, <coughs> you're getting out, and, you know, making room, <coughs> whilst you're flying underneath the perfectly good part of the aircraft, which is this one, using your pendulum, because it swings under the flying wing, not the bad wing. That's the unique asset we have. So why not use it? So watch this, look. Bush. Perfectly all right. That one side stalls, the other side flies. Now, that's you saying, oh yeah, but that's high aspect, nothing to do with me. But it does have an effect on us. All of us, you know, I fly, uh, I fly this, that's my glider actually. But uh, I also have an Alpina. They say the same concept is there. You can smash that brake on to clear that cravat as long as you don't hold it on. That's the problem. Don't hold it on, but smash it on. And that's when we say pump it. Take a wrap, pump it. But clear it. Don't do the little sort of gentle pump, exploratory pump. John, sorry. Yeah. Um, how is that different to spinning? Your okay, so yeah, well that is what they're saying. So, uh, I'll just hang on a sec, Tom, I'll answer that. I'll, uh... So that is, so th some pilots might call it spinning out of a... Uh, a cravat, and that's exactly what you're doing. You're spinning, so you're you're not allowing it to rotate on its your axis, but you're stalling it, and you are spinning because you are slight rotating as you're trying to fly. So it's a lot of opposite weight, it's a lot of opposite brake, um, and you're actively uh, making yourself forced to the to the good side, whilst you stall the other side. So that's your spin entry, your spin entry. That's what it feels like to spin. But you're actually stalling that side, which will then spin the glider. One is happening before the other. But just before we have a break, because everyone's getting hot on time. The really important takeaway is if you have a deflation on the outside of any turn, 
if it takes you, if it takes you, changes your direction, you've got to address that really quick. So smash on the opposite brake. Don't let any outside deflation turn you. If you're quick, if you're, you're flying along, uh, it's normally wing overs. This is why we, we teach it. But um, you have an outside deflation. If it turns you, you stop it. Stop that turn. The same as if you're thermaling. Thermaling on. This is great. Massive deflation. Do you ah, drop into the dive? Oh god, I've got to use that dive. Oh, you know, no. You just keep turning and pump it out whilst you're turning, because whilst you're turning is actually building pressure because you're in a bank. So there's more air being rammed into the leading edge, therefore going down the crossbar engine to the tip. So every time you pump that brake, that's more authority because you're mm -hmm. travelling faster, mm -hmm. you're heavier. So therefore, pumping it whilst in a bank is actually better to clear it. That's in a thermal. But if, in this example, the pilot, she is, she's doing lovely wing overs and a classic, you have an outside deflation, but never, ever let the outside deflation tell you because it slams you, all that pendulum goes the other way and it can sound like a really bad scenario. So never let an outside break, an outside deflation turn you. So you can see, watch, she's doing lovely entries, you've got a lovely weight shift, straight in, there's a lovely drop in, dive and roll. Lovely pattern, so boom, there's the outside deflation, but she's quick to be on the outside, oh, the inside brake there. She stops that energy going, and then she pumps it out. Fast reactions. If she was asleep, what was that? Woof, straight in. And what actually happens is she goes straight in to the deflated side, which will come out. And then, poof, another upper deflation will happen, bigger than the first one. If she didn't control the first one, she's not going to control the second. So it, it escalates. So if it ever, if a deflation ever turns you, you deal with it. Don't be asleep. Okay? So here we see another example. Pilot's doing some wing overs, but he's just slow to react. Watch this. Dive and roll. So we've got a lovely pattern going on. He's doing really well. And suddenly, boof, there it is. He doesn't keep going left. He lets it go right. So now all he has to do is pull on the left brake. Ah, oh, he slows it down. Phew. Now he pumps it out. Because quicker to react. Do you see what I mean? But you don't let it, don't let it keep going. Just stop it. You've got to stop it. And this is one of the most common incidents you will have as pilots <coughs> flying around. You'll have you'll be flying along, maybe you go in someone's wake whilst you've you're not quite ready for it, and poof, and it takes you, whoa! And you've got to slam on that opposite weight shift and break, as the textbook says, and roll away. Yeah? Once you're underneath, then it sort of changes, the physics change. But the initial, the initial roll and the initial reaction has to be fast to stop you accelerating. So the rule is, if it ever changes your direction, you deal with that real quick. Stop it. <coughs> Happy? So we'll have a break before we talk about these.